Word in Your Attic, a Zoom with a View. Well, look, this is an honour. And welcome to uh, Word in Your Attic, to uh, the great Polly Birkbeck, uh, the press wrangler to the stars, an old pal of ours from our days back at Word magazine. Polly, fantastic to see you. Where, so where do we join you now? Where are you now? I am in a small village in Fe um, Surrey called Fetcham. There's not many rock and roll credentials here, except that legend has it, Mark Bowen used to rehearse in his John's children's band in the local village hall and one of the Boomtown Rats lives here. Which one? Oh, ask for more. Which, which one? Well, I've forgotten his name. He runs an animal agency now that, um, oh, you know. Uh, talent agency for animals. Yeah, he does. Oh, he really? Does, Cox, that's the one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good, very good. So how has lockdown been then? Well, how, how have you how have you managed? Have you spent your time? Obviously, you're still working on the on the on your um, your press agency. But what yeah, else well, have you been up to? Home anyway, so it hasn't been too difficult really. So I just sit in my office here and work at home. And I'm currently working on Paul Weller's new album, which is still coming out in July. So buy it from all good digital stores. Um, so not too much has changed, except um, I can't go to meetings, which is such a shame. Uh, that, but but you, you were saying you've avoided Zoom up until now, is that right? I've sort of spoken to friends and things on Zooms, but I prefer a normal phone, actually. I just find them a bit off-putting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> You're yeah. You're looking at yourself in, the, in it. But, and I don't have very good technology. This is my daughter's iPad that I had to sort of prize from her sweaty little hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you're dealing with homeschooling and things like that well luckily she just sort of gets on with it herself because she's 13 so they set it all for her at school so i don't have much and, and she I, i'm not very good i'm actually helped her with some maths for the first time ever because i'm useless because it was about understanding bank statements and i could uh -oh. do that oh that's right thing, that's yeah. very concrete that's very good <laughs> So, um, what have, what have you been doing uh, uh, apart from work? I mean, have you been reviewing your possessions like many people have? Unfortunately, I have. I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to get rid of a lot of my vinyl, which is very sad. But I just thought I don't really need it. It's taking up too much room. I don't really need all the suede twelve inches to keep for the rest of my life. To be honest, we had just had to clear out my parents' house because they, they died recently oh, and um, yeah. they had so much stuff. And I just thought having so much stuff is not that good, really. Were you so, tempted to keep any of the records from your folks' house? Um, I actually, they had loads and I kept quite a few. And they had things like the Village Fogs and, you know, James Taylor and Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Oh, really? Oh, fantastic. Myself. Hippie, hippie parents, you see. This oh, is... Yeah. It's a completely fresh to Mark and myself. We don't yeah. understand this at all, but go on, tell us about this. But um, I wanted to try and sell them because I thought I looked up some and they were, they were quite valuable. They were in such terrible, tatty condition, could take into parties and stuff. Because they were but, used. They were loved. No, That's, that's good how thing. things were. Yeah. The Village Fugs one, I thought, oh, I've got a bit of a valuable one here, but the sleeve was just like dog-eared beyond belief and things. So. Is it, are the but Village I, Fugs the same thing as the Fugs? Is that yeah, Tuli Kupferberg and yeah. Ed Sandler? Well, they're a horrendous like. looking bunch of Americans who look like hobbits. Yeah, Would they had a the record ones? They had a record called It Crawled Into My Hand, Honest. Honest. <laughs> I get them mixed up with um, Country Joe and the Fish. They're the other ones with the weird... Oh, very, oh they, they can't go wrong with them. I think First, they had a, they had the had idea of having parents that gave you a fug or played the fugs <laughs> in the household is absolutely uh, unimaginable dude. for Dave and I. Incredible. <laughs> we're very envious, actually. The idea that mum and dad were downstairs playing electric music for the mind and body, you know, while you were <laughs> supposed to be going <laughs> I have got some of them, but, you know, I did. I had a guy that came around and buy, bought records and stuff off me sometimes, and I think I did get rid of a few. He had some Beatles ones, actually, to him. So. Oh, really? Right. I was probably sitting on a small fortune and didn't know it. But had no, I you're, probably, you're probably not at all. So what have you got to show and tell? Well, obviously, we have to start with first records I bought, which... Oh, I'm good. Go on. Okay, but I have a little quiz for you. Right, so I bought two on the same day because I got given a book token. The first one was, of course... Oh, Ian Dury. <laughs> now, is that, is that a rhythm yes. stick or is it... It's oh, yeah, hit me with your rhythm stick. Okay, right, right. What a great cover that is. Isn't it? Barney Funny. Bubbles cover. Yeah, Barney Bubbles. I bought another single, and it coincidentally was also on Stiff Records. If you And it was out at the same time. I think that's late 78, early 79. If you can guess what it is, you get 
three Ken Bruce Popmaster points. <laughs> so it's was a it a reckless record. Eric record? Was no, it it, it's quite an unusual one, and I, I'm quite proud of myself for choosing this as one of my first ever records because it is quite odd. There's a clue. I don't know. Oh, it's Nick Lowe. That's Nick Lowe. It's a blue label. No, okay. I give in. Go on. Rachel Sweet. Oh, B okay. L oh, yes. B A B Y. Yes. Amazing. I know. Very, Both very I think she was on the original well. Stiff Tour on the train, wasn't she? That's right. Rachel Sweet. I don't know what happened to her? I think she was in the film, the John Walters film Hairspray, for some reason. That kind of rings a bell, but I still really like it. I think it just scraped the top forty as well. Yes, it did. Uh, she got a lot of lot of press, didn't she? Uh, at well, that time, because I was eleven, I didn't. I hadn't oh well, it. yeah, we 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 noticed. <laughs> we remembered. We remembered. So you still got hit me with, with your own stick. That's no bad thing. And my no. second, the second, unfortunately, wasn't the first. The second gig I ever went to, taken by my parents me and my sisters, was Ian during the blockheads at Hammersmith Odeon in 1979, supported by, I think it was Root Boy Slim and the Sex Change Band. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. That is impressive. And, I haven't heard of them, have you, for a while. And Lindsay no, no, for... Johnson, I think. Lindsay Crazy Joe, probably on the bill as well. That's extraordinary. So your mum and dad, you're, you're 11. Good parenting. They, they take you, uh, darling, the, their support group is called Root Boy Slim and the Sex Change Band. Please avert your ears. Is that what they did? Sadly, my first gig, not as cool, but my mum, my dad had a spare ticket and he took me to see Dire Straits at Hammersmith Odeon. Very good. But it was when, you know, Sultan's a Swing, and that was a brilliant, uh, brilliant, a brilliant record. If anyone disagrees, I'll fight them, you know. Uh, quite, you're quite right. No, no, we'll, we'll back you on that one. Yeah, absolutely. No hold shame you, there. We'll hold your coat. Yeah, yeah. Also, do people remember the first 12 inch record they bought? I uh, bought, I can. I was only talking about this the other day. I can remember I was working in a record shop in the mid-70s. Oh, there you go. Killing Joe Requiem. When's that? Yeah, I, I saw them at the CND March 1980. I was 14, absolutely blown away. And there was also the pop group, Too Arty for me. Obviously, I was yeah, only 14. There you go. So I made a pilgrimage to Rough Trade Records in um, Notting Hill to buy this. And I remember I, I was um, 50p short. And the nice man in there said... Just give it to us next time you come back. And I never went back, so I still owe Rough Trader uh, 50p. Have you, been, have you been, uh, you know, engaging in long detours to avoid going past that shop ever since? In case oh, somebody's going to be a man waiting out. there. Why I ought to. There she is. Waving his there fist. There she is, officer. <laughs> I did go in there years later, but I don't think, because um, it was a long way for me to travel. But there's also ooh, a 10-inch record inside there. I remember those. What a 10 inch as well that's as a 12 That's precocious taste no, for a 14 year old. That's fantastic. For some reason it's so you didn't go through a kind of pop phase, a kind of, you know, you know, top of the pops type, uh, you know. Oh my God, of... top of the pops. Of course I did. I used to write down everything that was on top of the pops every week. In fact, have I got anything Oh, here? I do hope so. Oh, do you know what? I used to, I, I put a load of this, the stuff I found on Instagram of all the things I wrote. It was very popular. I used to draw a little, um, figures showing uh, expressions of what I thought of the records like if they were throwing up if it was something naff or pogoing if it was a punk but I don't have any to find <laughs> can't find no, them no I love all those things people used to write in their exercise books you know while watching Top of the Pops or, or and the number of people who wrote down the chart every week um yeah I wrote down what was on Top of the Pops every week yeah or yeah. um what else did I do Oh, or you know i did find this the other day records wanted and great big lists oh what terrific whether i ticked it off and oh give us a few no give us a few uh, titles on there because it was all john listening this is the fantasy Hill. list single in the beginning there was rhythm by the slits um got but then swapped for madness um single ub40 food for thought taped from radio <laughs> um susie and the in banshees the music business as we know it yeah. um, single christine susie and the banshees brilliant of course um i know oh lp the specials 
Oh, get wow. off Paula. I didn't have very much money, so I used to swap things. Well, so. who did? Who did? Oh, no. Love will tear us apart, Joy Division. Right. When I have the cash. Oh, <laughs> what? And so it goes. So you, kept, you kept that up for quite a long time, didn't you? Oh, you yes. did. There's that pages of it. Absolutely That's brilliant. your boy. So it's the fantasy shopping list. list. Yeah. I love the lists. <laughs> but also, talking of other things like that. Did you keep scrapbooks of all your ticket stubs? Well, but you clearly did. Not only but the ticket stubs, the advert and the review of the game. Oh, oh God, that oh, complete that's experience. Absolutely brilliant. That's God, brilliant. take us through. Take us through Give one us of some those examples. Give... Who is that? The Southern yeah. Death Cult. There's this one. There's Bar House, sponsored oh, by the birthday party at the Lyceum, and Depeche Mode at the venue. Right. Not a very. Well, I remember good that typeface so well. You're going to find something written a review by me or Dave in a minute. I think it sounds that because I used to read sounds. Depeche yeah. Mode didn't think they were going to do very well. <laughs> Another Depeche Mode one said they were the electronic Bay City Rollers. There. I don't think that was me. No, you. It's all. Um, who's this? Steve Rappel. Oh, uh, oh Dave, yeah. Oh, Steve Rappel. He's a photographer, really. Yeah. Go on. Doug. Johnny Waller gave Bear House a very good review. Right, right. So, um, yes. And how, much, how much was the ticket? How much was the this ticket for one, that gig? I don't know. They're normally about two pounds, but I've kept all my tickets and I found loads when I was clearing out my parents. And it, I was just thinking about how nice the way um, they always used to be, they used to design the tickets. And I worked for a promoter and he used to say, it was nice to design a ticket and use the logo at the very least because the um, the punters, as he called them, would keep them as a memento. So, you know, you'd get as a clash ticket. They always, you know, made an effort. No, sure. sure. You know, and it doesn't so, have no. It's, but it's, it's so tragic now. They're all just printed out. Oh, it's a barcode, exactly. Well, you know, it's key. really sad, isn't it? You know, you know, even just that. And I've kept so many, and then I find them. them Bronsky beat. I have no recollection of that gig whatsoever, but I clearly attended it. But it's a shame they don't do that anymore because it was everyone used to collect them, didn't they? Well, well Dave, you've got a haven't you got a bag of tickets well, up there? I think you have. I had, I had it, Your old mate Steve, I've got some upstairs actually. I would have gone and got them. Very dull. And I was just looking at a ticket before you before, before we contacted you from uh, Richard Thompson at the Hackney Empire in 1987, four pound fifty. Oh, five pound on the door. How much is obviously I said because I work for a promoter, I used to get loads of free tickets. Right, so. right. Uh Bothole Su Bothole Surfers and Loop, a fiver. Right. Good work. Um, what have we got here? Pixies at Crystal Palace Bowl. Oh how much was that? Fifteen pounds that. Yeah, yeah. Is that the same Crystal Palace Bowl that kind of Pink Floyd and Yes and so forth played back in the day, Mark? Crystal Palace Bowl was the it was the little place just across the, the water, wasn't it? Across the lake where Bob Marley and the Whalers played in yes. 1980, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw them supported by, uh, yeah, I think it was um, uh, the Average White Band. And, oh, right, and, it was the same oh, place. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Jackson. <laughs> Terrific. Lovely. That's a beautiful ticket. Fabulous. So which promoter did you work for, Polly? I worked for John Curd. Oh, John Curd. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Revered and feared in equal measures. What's happened to John Curd? If we could... He's still around. He's still oh, right. Around. I haven't seen him for years. Yeah. So... Promoters tend to, they come and they go, don't they? they yeah, he's uh... still around, but that was, uh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So is that how you started in the music business, working for... Uh, yeah, I did. yeah, I did. I worked for him. Yeah, so that's how come I got so many free gig tickets and stuff and and stuff. Yeah, I worked for him in the late eighties. You posted a fantastic post the other day of a group called King Kurt, who I remember being. Have you got that around? Who were in the it's a mid eighties, and they were a spikerbilly band, weren't they? And this key thing about their shows, if I remember rightly, was was food throwing. There was they, they did just people. Food. And uh, your poster, have you got it there? I have. Right, they were. Um, they used to do a residency in a place called the One Hundred and One Club in Clapham. It was fifty p to get in. It was called the Rat and Rodent Club. 
There it is. Oh, there. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's got, with a, with a sausage big. juggling troupe. Students, one pound fifty, I think it says. <laughs> I love the way that they're billed as the horrible King Kurt. In fact, I saw the Pogues supporting them actually at this place once. Pogue Mahone, as they were then, with Spider Stacy banging his head on a tray. But the other thing about King Kurt is they used to do hand painted tickets, hand coloured tickets. Oh, okay. Each week, like this. Oh, wow. that's fantastic. This. They were cool. Oh, cool. I don't know. <laughs> so they arrived hand painted. They were they, they, that's, they were that's... hand coloured in. They were coloured in. And if you wanted, you could collect the set of Ooh Walla Wallas, which was this, which was their dance. And on the back, so I put a few. They you could they had the collect the Ooh Walla Wallas. <laughs> you did. Hand. I hope the members of King Kurt watching this because they yes. will be so touched, won't they, Dave? They were going, apparently. They were, are they are still they, going? They had vertical they? hair. Do you remember? They had vertical yeah. hair, and they were always covered in flour and eggs by the end of the gig. I remember, Mark, there was a poster of them in Smash Hits. You mocked up, I think it was for Christmas. It was the Last Supper, and they were, like, wrecking we did. a banquet with Shalimar and people like that. We Smash Hits thought they were fantastic because they were just so gloriously cartoonish, weren't they? Absolutely ridiculous. Well, they were like the Bash street, street Kids, I mean, the music. but with the strange hair. But the gigs were absolutely brilliant. They really were. But the music, you know, take it or leave it, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, have you have you still got old singles and things like that? You still keep those? Yeah, I've still got a lot of seven inches, and I probably will keep a lot of those, although I did go through a load and, and have thinned it out a little bit because um, I used to do a bit of DJing, so I've got a lot of old sort of disco seven inches and things, and I don't really need those anymore, so... All the old backer seven inches, I think, are going into the um, car boots. <laughs> does, you, does your daughter ever show any any interest in this stuff? Does she go through it and go, oh, don't throw that away? Or kids now, they like sticking them on their wall. She said, oh, have you got any seven inches? Like, they like sticking them on their wall. And she asked me for some cassettes. And they use them like ornaments now, not to listen to, but for like ornaments. <laughs> so, But I do well, remember one of the pieces. <laughs> I remember one of my, my stepkids, when we were playing a record, he's looking at it, he goes, oh my God, you can turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my kids used to say to me, what are those dark bits on the record? <laughs> you had to explain that that was the bit in between the tracks where you lowered the needle and where it was silent. It was absolutely, you know, incomprehensible, the entire thing. Well, my, my youngest daughter moved into a flat in Walthamstow and in, inevitably came back and said, have you got any spare vinyls? Which I hate the expression vinyl. Yeah, why does everybody call them vinyls, the young people? It's in the, the plural. The young it? people. I said, so why do you want that? She said, well, uh, flatmate, she's got a record player, but we've got no vinyls. And I just <laughs> thought, this is the world, the completely the wrong way around this, you know. It's and very I, collectible, though, again. Oh, undoubtedly. But it's it's whether it's cherishable. Yeah, it's but, I mean, your mum and dad stuff, you know, was as you say, it was knackered because they played it, because they they used it and they took it around. You know, nobody put stuff on their walls back in those days. That's, no, that's a completely, you know, a recent thing. Yeah. Well. So, uh, Paul, what else have you got? I remember you mentioning to me not long ago about a, 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 a David Bowie artifact, and if you have you still got that? Well. Okay, I was at some party and he walked over and said hello to someone I was sitting with and, and said hello to us and he um, put his cigarette out. She says, well, go. And there's the cigarette part. <laughs> I took it out of the ashtray and I still have it from about 22 years ago. Maybe we can extract the DNA and recreate him. That is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I've never seen anybody do that. I interviewed Keith Richards once and he smoked a cigarette from me. I wanted to just lean across and say, do you mind if I take that? But it's just too gauche and embarrassing. I can't do it. But that stuff. is fantastic. So you literally put it in a, like, like a kind of CID, put it in a plastic sealed bag. You put, you put it in the cigarette tray, I don't remember. And I just took it out and put it in my purse, I think. Uh, oh, it's a Marlboro, by the way. Not a Marlboro light, a Marlboro. That's well, that's so fantastic. Well, it kind of it goes with my theory. Or Mark and I have talked about this, but with rock stars, you don't really want to interview them at all. You just want to look at them. 
you just want to kind of pick little bits. You want to it's, take things away. You know, you know what I mean? You're just fascinated by proximity. Go on. When I, I was at this thing, we just sort of went after work one day. We had some tickets for the Verve and we said, well, let's use these. It was some absolute vodka thing. And um, we were all just sort of sitting around. And honestly, the room had this weird hush went over it. And everything went into slow motion. And as we turned and David Bowie was walking in the door, it was like some unearthly moment. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, who was who was very very slight, wasn't he? Incredibly thin and actually much smaller than you imagine, which is the case with most pop stars anyway. But so much smaller than you imagine. He was very small. He was he played at Phoenix Festival once, and my friend was desperate to get his autograph for her friend who couldn't come because he'd broken his leg. And we waited. He was having his photo taken for the music papers, and we waited and waited, hiding backstage for the exact moment when he walked out. And my friend ran over, and she was t- she was taller than him to get his autograph. She was taller than him. So my David Bowie moments, there they are. It's quite interesting that there's a piece to be written about this. Pop stars are small, Mark. Pop stars, generally speaking, they're more often than not small. I think it's this is true because if you know people who, who are, are over six foot, they tend to not desperately need attention because they automatically get attention just by walking into a room by, 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 by virtue of being tall. And often it's about just people wanting to be noticed, isn't it? I, I, I'm sure there's something to do with it. Well, Paul Wellers, well, he's not, Paul Wellers not small, is he? I mean, no, he's, he's not six foot, is he? But, no. Yeah. Is he six foot? Okay, all right, but, fine. Uh, yeah. I remember well, seeing um, Pete Doherty once, and he is really t- I expected yeah. him to be tiny, and he's really tall. Oh, really? Yeah, most people, you know, are surprised at how small we they are. We did a chart and smash hits once. Do you remember, Dave, with the smallest uh, pop star, who at the time I think was probably <laughs> Prince or Kylie Minogue, and he went up to, was it Fish from Marillion? It might have been Fish or Joe Jackson. Fish or Joe could've... Jackson. And <laughs> halfway up was a pillar box, to give you some idea of scale. <laughs> and they were all cut out laboriously the days before computers <laughs> had glued it. onto this layout. It was so uh... funny. Is it, was Prince at the bottom? And Prince was at the bottom. Him. Five foot two, I think you're fine. <laughs> Kylie Minogue, five foot Kylie two. Kylie Minogue, half. women's division, slightly different. That's right, that's, <laughs> that's right. So right. funny. That's oh. amazing. So what else have you got, Polly? Anything else there? Any other uh, things you can dig out? What else have I you got? Can't, but you can't beat David Bowie's sig. That is absolutely Surely. fantastic. Um, yeah, what have I got here? I remember when... Um, Gigs, you know, in the olden days where you could just walk up and get in. Oh, God, yes. Um, I went to see the Smiths at Hammersmith Palais and I didn't have a ticket and I got there and it was sold out. My friend had a ticket and I was absolutely beside myself. So I went to the McDonald's around the corner and I can't believe I still kept this. I got a flyer that was handed out and I sat there with a biro and I did that and I stood outside Hammersmith Palais. Oh. Right? That's lovely. Someone did sold you see? me a ticket. Oh, brilliant. I know. The only one. Well, what? Can you remember what you paid for it? It was £3.50. And in those days, they put the support bands on the ticket, the red guitars in this case. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, uh, I can't believe I still got that. That's, that, that's, that's really br- it's brilliant that you've really done is. that. It's really good you, you've done that. You should write a book. Uh, you, re- you really should. <laughs> Because there's nobody else doing that. Um, mm. But, yeah, I'm very envious of people who hung on to stuff like that. You know. Yeah, like, all right, McCure Awards invite signed, oh, by, of Rob- course. Ro- signed by Robert Plant. Oh, of course. Good work. Uh, which year was that? 1992. Very good one. I remember it. <laughs> was that the yeah, one where, yeah. Dan- where Danny nipped up to uh, Tower Records and bought the Led Zeppelin record to <laughs> take did. it back and get them all to sign it? Got back and got them all signed. Good work from him. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of autographs, I remember going to see, um, do you remember this? The, uh, the board line. Oh, God, that's, oh, that's yeah. R.E.M., wasn't it? Yeah. Was it R- yeah. R.E.M. And Michael Stipe came out and my friend said, go on, get his autograph. And I was like, no, 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 no. Go on, go on. There's no one around. So I'm not, I'm not you know, because Peter Buck had um, signed my matchbook, you know, like the board line matchbook. And when I finally like, plucked up courage, he wouldn't give me his autograph. Really? He wouldn't give you his order. That's disgraceful. I'm sorry. He's gone down in my estimation. And what was his reason for not doing it? I was mortified. Mortified there. I've got Peter Bucks, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Did he have an excuse for why he wasn't giving you his he order? Said, 
I won't sign your matchbook, but I'll shake your hand. Oh, okay. Me disappearing into the floor. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy, is it? It's yeah, not well, easy. I'm a Adrian D. Voice said to me, "Oh, he never signs auto Later on, he never signs autographs." Is that true? Apparently. No, I, that may but well. He does be. now, but. Yeah. There's a brilliant, there's a brilliant moment in a, in a Rolling Stone interview with Bob Dylan where um, they're sitting in a little restaurant in New York, and a guy comes in off the street and says, um, "says uh, Bob Dylan, fantastic to see you. Can I get your autograph?" And the guy signs it, and uh, and two minutes later, the waiter comes back and says, "That guy who signed your sort of thing. He's outside the restaurant selling it." And Bob Dylan just goes, "How much is he asking?" Which I thought was really good. Quite an interesting question, actually, to be able to calibrate your own worth, you know. But wouldn't yeah. you be fed up if you found out that somebody was selling it two minutes later? Oh, I, I, saw, I think a lot of, um, you know, famous people don't like just randomly signing things now because it just uh, turns up on eBay. And, I mean, I know people that like, they, they, if it says to Mark from so-and-so, then it's okay. But if it's just signing a sleeve, they can be a bit funny because I just know that, that a lot of the time people are just going to sell it. It's true. Well, it's that's like giving him 60 quid, isn't it? Well, that's why Ringo stopped, wasn't it? That's why Ringo Starr famously stopped because he was he was just getting sent, sent stuff to sign, which was immediately turning up on eBay. I can kind of see. I can no, see. I can it's see very sad, point. isn't Absolutely. it? Yeah, it yeah. is. It is sad that it has to has to turn into something like that. Well, Polly, it's been lovely to talk to you. we you've brightened our day. I hope we we've, we've brightened yours slightly. That's yes. such an impressive array of stuff. I can't get over those those scrapbooks. They bring all the little reviews the in them. It's fabulous. I never thought I'd see the day where I'd show my collection of King Kurt tickets. This is fabulous. the moment. This is me. That's what it's what for. we're here for. There are very the few upsides to this situation. That's one of them. <laughs> it's social work we're doing. We like to feel Thank that we lightened Look. everybody's load. <laughs> Bye. It's Mark Owen. Oh, who is that? Bye. Mark Owen. It's a Mark Bye. Owen. <laughs> Bye from Mark Owen. <laughs> Cheers. Fantastic. Thanks yeah. so much.